Here's how creatine is bad for you. In order to find that out, you're going to have to go to your school nurse and have a rat off make-believe because it's all make-believe. They have not found any reliable ways in which creatine is bad for you if you take five grams of it per day for months on end. It's just not a thing. Next time folks tell you creatine's bad, ask them how. Maybe you'll learn something or maybe they'll just talk themselves into not having anything to say because they didn't to begin with. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for RP Strength. I've been a professor of exercise and sports science for a while. I am a competitive bodybuilder and Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappler, but none of that matters because today we're talking about creatine and creatine loves you no matter who you are. Unfortunately, creatine comes with some facts about its use and what it does and a crap load of myths. And I'm sure you've heard a lot of these myths in the past. We are going to generate some clarity today and get to the real real about how to take creatine, what it does, what the downsides are, and so on. Creatine technically helps a bit with the following parameters. One, repeat performance. If you typically do sets of 10 on creatine, you might be able to do sets of 11 or 12. Nothing has changed other than the ability to push a little harder towards the end. It can improve sprint performance, jump performance, and even grappling performance in repeat style. Creatine can help boost your strength a little bit over time in the three to six repetition range. It can also do that. And creatine robustly helps add a small but notable amount of muscle size to your body, which is dope, which is why most people take it. It's got a few other cool health benefits later we'll talk about, but for now, those are its core propositions of why people take it. That's the reality but there are lots of myths out there. Your school nurse may have told you that creatine is going to poison you. It's coming for you even when you sleep. Your dad's 90-year-old doctor, who half the time doesn't know who he is, and the other half says creatine is bad for you. Your mom, I'm not buying you creatine. That's poison. You're only 15 years old. I. She's Jewish. Congratulations. The bro at the GNC isn't helping much either because you come to your parents and your school nurse and your dad's 90-year-old doctor for some fucking bad advice. And then you go over to the GNC bro who sells you supplements, no offense, GNC, and he's like, yeah, man, this fucking revolutionized your shit, bro. You're going to get five times bigger and 18 times more jack. And this kind of creatine, man, I don't usually give it to people that young because it's fucking more powerful than steroids, which is all bullshit. Creatine does not measure up to pharmaceuticals, but it does work pretty well. And it, we'll get to what kind of health side effects it has in a bit. So let's get some facts and fiction sorted before we know more false things about creatine then we do real ones, which is really the case for a lot of people. All right, let's get to source first. Where should you be getting your creatine other than the store? Amazon, which is also a store on the internet. But seriously, creatine monohydrate is the standard. It's been studied the most. It's been the most vetted. It's been the most safety controlled, everything down the line. Other creatines can work. Creatine chloride, I believe, is effective, for example, but other creatines don't work. For example, creatine ethyl ester, which used to be a big deal a few years back, doesn't even clear the GI tract. It just does not leave your gut. You just shit it right the fuck out, mostly unaltered, which means it doesn't get into your muscles and it doesn't do you any goddamn good. So buy creatine monohydrate is my overwhelming best advice to you. And unless it's fake creatine, creatine is so easy to make, usually the brands don't matter either. So just take the cheap stuff from brands you know that sell good stuff I usually buy creatine from like Optimum Nutrition because they've been around for like a generation and their creatine is priced competitively and it's just creatine and it's all I fucking want. No fancy bullshit. Now, to be completely honest, I just lied to you there. I don't actually use Optimum Nutrition's creatine. I use a special blend that they make personally for me that is infused with diamonds. Diamonds, darling. That's actually what it's called. Creatine, diamonds, darling, by Dr. Mike. Why? Because I like to urinate out an obscene amount of wealth. If you're not into that category, don't buy fancy creatines. Just get creatine monohydrate. It's the best. You're welcome. I just saved you a ton of money. What about the dose? Okay, we have the source. How much creatine do we take? Anywhere between two to five grams per day is good for almost everyone. Unless you are pro strongman size, then maybe five to 10 grams on occasion is a fine idea. Almost everyone, including very large 200 something pound bodybuilders, can start with and end with five grams of creatine per day. That's really good. There's no reason to take less. There's no reason to take more in almost any case. Some folks will try to get you to take more creatine than that because they will allege that you will become Superman from doing it, but they usually just want to sell it to you and make more money off of you and want you to go through it faster so that you rebuy again. Other people will say you take less creatine. You don't need five grams. Just two is good. It's less toxicity. But creatine does not have an acute or chronic toxicity enhancement effect. It is just not a concern. So fuck them. That's bullshit. 
Five grams, folks. You heard it here first. Hopefully not first, but you heard it here anyway. What about creatine loading? You get this question a lot. Sometimes on the package, it'll say take, you know, five grams of creatine four times a day for a week straight. You'll load it up into your muscles and then you coast on just five grams a day for the rest of that time. It definitely works. It loads the creatine into your muscles faster. However, there's no compelling reason to load it versus not loading it. If you don't load it, it's just going to take about two weeks for the creatine to fully fill up. It's a fun ride. You don't blow it up super quick. Your body weight rises over time. Your muscles feel more turgid, ooh, turgidity, and stiff and tone, tone-y the entire time. It's awesome. It's a good ramp in. So I would say just save your money. Take five grams a day, and in a few weeks, you'll be kicking it, and you'll take creatine for another long time after, you don't have to quadruple the dose. Some allegations with the companies found the research on creatine loading compelling, but not so compelling. They just put it on their labels because they want to sell you more creatine. Some companies definitely that selfish and short-sighted. Other companies are not. In any case, creatine loading is some combination of optional and pointless. So I would just say just five grams and you're good to go. Timing. Got a lot of details so far, but when do I take my creatine? Technically speaking, by a small fraction, taking it after your workout with carbohydrate in it can open up the whole insulin pathway and the non-insulin pathway, get creatine into your muscles faster and fill them up more by a very small fraction. And there's no acute effect of taking creatine. There's a lot of creatine in pre-workout products. Got to get my creatine in, except creatine loads into your muscles literally over days and weeks. And an acute intake of creatine does nothing to the insides of your muscle. It doesn't boost performance. It doesn't boost anabolism. It does diddly dick. Timing for creatine thus does not really matter. You can take it at any time of the day. And what I would highly recommend to you is to take it at a time of your day that's scheduled in regularly so that you don't forget. If you start missing creatine doses here and there, the intramuscular concentrations will fall and then you will pay the price for not really using your creatine properly. You have to be consistent when you take your creatine. I do mine every morning with my vitamins and shit, creatine, NMN powder, vitamins, minerals, et cetera, CBD oil, and I'm fucking golden. Every morning, it's the same ritual, whether I train or not. Creatine probably shouldn't be tied to your workout because first of all, there is no effect there that boosts creatine absorption by any uh, margin that you can go home and and really, really uh, get excited about. But probably you don't train every day and creatine should be taken pretty much daily to keep those concentrations growing at first and high after that. So, you know, I wouldn't tie the creatine to the workout. I would just kind of take it in the morning. And yes, you can dry scoop it, but then have a gulp of water after that. If you want, you can mix creatine into your shake the night before. There are concerns that the creatine breaks down and is no longer available, but uh, that takes probably a week or more for creatine in water solution to break down to a meaningful extent, so it's not a big deal. If you put your shake in the fridge and you insist on putting creatine in your shake, if you put your shake in the fridge the night before or something you do at workout, that's totally fine. But then again, I wouldn't take creatine with a shake. I would just take it in the morning so you can be nice and regular with it. All right, what about health? There's all these health downsides, right? I mean, my school nurse isn't totally out of her mind. Do you believe that? Maybe. Multiple studies so far have confirmed, or rather gave us huge, huge ideas that creatine is neuroprotective, that is, it protects the integrity of your nervous system, making you healthy in your nervous system for longer, which me- means you are probably more intelligent for longer in your life, among other things. It is cardioprotective, so it is good for the cardiovascular system, reduces the chance of various cardiovascular diseases, and it also seems to enhance bone health. Here's how creatine is bad for you. In order to find that out, you're going to have to go to your school nurse and have a rat off make-believe because it's all make-believe. They have not found any reliable ways in which creatine is bad for you if you take five grams of it per day for months on end. It's just not a thing. So you don't have to worry about it. Creatine's fucking amazing. Next time folks tell you creatine's bad, ask them how. Maybe you'll learn something or maybe they'll just talk themselves into not having anything to say because they didn't to begin with. And by the way, watch out for this one they may be mistaking creatine for creatinine. Creatinine, which is a totally different thing, is a byproduct of kidney function. And if you have a lot of kidney function, sorry, it's a, it's a, something that comes out of your muscles regularly. And if a lot of it appears in your urine, a lot of it appears in your bloodstream, then your kidneys are malfunctioning as one candidate mechanism among 50 others. If it's insanely high, your kidneys are almost certainly malfunctioning. Because when they do your kidney screens, when you go to the doctor, yes, your 90-year-old doctor will even do this, creatinine is something they measure. And some people, and guys, I wish I was lying, but I'm not, are so fucking out of it. They don't even know that creatinine and creatine are not the same thing. So they'll be like, oh, creatinine is too high. It's bad. They're like, oh, yeah. 
And then later, their son wants to buy creatine. They're like, what are you kidding me, kid? My doctor says I'm dying from this stuff. Get in the car. It's two different things. And creatine does not have some kind of deleterious effect on the kidneys or on creatinine. It's just not related. Everything's going to be fine. Creatine is good for your health, period. If you follow the plan of our simple science diet, we guarantee you'll see results or your money back. How can we make this promise? Well, we've spent over 10 years researching and experimenting with real diets and real people using them, which means we really know how to get this process right for basically everyone. As part of our offer, at no extra expense to you, you'll receive the RP Gym Free at home workout routine, eight user friendly ebooks about the science of diet, cooking techniques, and all necessary basic fitness knowledge, together with detailed guides on meal preparation and strategies for maintaining a healthy diet while away from home. If you're ready to change your body, click the link in the description of this video to get started. But maybe you shouldn't take it all the time. Some folks have hypothesized, including me, that you need some time off for creatine. Now, I've looked into the literature and it doesn't seem like exogenous creatine coming in from outside of the body interferes with endogenous creatine production in a meaningful way. That is creatine you make yourself naturally because you do make some. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of evidence for any kind of interference effect. But I will say you don't always need creatine. If you're in a maintenance phase and you're just kind of chilling and let your body heal up, you don't need creatine. Like, what do you need the superpowers for? Active rest phase, like really you're going to bring your creatine uh, on your fucking vacation and also vacations. Two weeks of active rest, one week of vacation, you don't need to take your creatine. So I come off for most of those times um, and that means I can uh, have creatine in my program when I need it, when I'm gaining muscle, when I'm losing fat and I take breaks of it just out of convenience and to save money, which means Judaism powers activate. Hi! You know how superheroes power up? They're like, Ugh! and then they're like Super Saiyan, superhero, Jewish superhero guy. The powering up hurts and scares him. Oh, my allergies. Oh, no, I've got a terrible burden of superpowers. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, saving money, that's a fucking superpower. Okay, Mike, fine. Creatine's great, but it makes me gain a shitload of water weight. What the fuck is up with that? Well, here's the thing. In the vast majority of cases, creatine actually brings water into the muscle bringing it out of the extracellular compartment around it, which means it's intramuscular water gain that you get from creatine, shit, up to five pounds in some cases, and not subcutaneous gain, not the shit that makes you seem watery. So visually, it makes your muscles pop more, which is amazing. Gaining five pounds on creatine visually comes really close to gaining five pounds of actual muscle. It's a look that you want. That happens for the average person. It even happens for almost all people. Some people seem to complain that creatine makes them bloated in the subcutaneous way. If that's the case, I would experiment with some things. But if it's still the case, consider dropping it out one or two weeks before your bodybuilding show if you compete to get that extra crispy look. But I will say most people should keep creatine in for the show because it'll bloat you up in the best way possible inside the muscles and not underneath the skin. What about stomach issues? Some people say, dude, I love this. I want all the creatine. I just can't fucking handle it. It fucking wrecks my stomach. Well, Creatine doesn't reliably cause stomach issues in any of the studies that they've done about it, and they've done a crap load. But some people get stomach issues from all kinds of weird shit. If creatine seems to be bothering you, I would try a few things. One, make sure it's your creatine supplement and not something else in your diet, because sometimes you take a bunch of supplements together and you're like, it's the creatine. But you stop taking the casein protein and your stomach feels fine, and you're like, fuck, it was the casein. So try a few things. Next, try changing the brand. Maybe the brand is adding some bullshit in there that you don't like. You get a more pure brand, something like Optimum Nutrition, some shit like that. All of a sudden, you're feeling just fine and everything's hunky-dory. And maybe you can change the type of creatine. There are a few types, and if one of them's not doing well, maybe you can go that. Don't choose the brand that doesn't work, so take ethyl ester and completely remove it from the equation. Give this a thought. You don't have to take creatine if you get stomach issues, whatever. Most people don't get stomach issues from it, and if they think they do, it's usually not the creatine. So let's wrap all this up. If you're a beginner, you probably don't need creatine. It's probably just not worth your money. If you're an intermediate, creatine is great. And I would enjoy it for a few months here and there and come off for a few months here and there just to coast or make some gains without it. Put it in kind of as a special superpower towards the end of a muscle gain phase, you know, uh, last six weeks of a muscle gain phase, last six to eight weeks of a cutting phase. Creatine can be really awesome. And of course, more than that, if you like. And for the advanced folks, creatine is highly recommended for best results. I wouldn't skimp on it. You should probably come off during maintenance and active rest and not take creatine or at least consider it. And really monitor the look 
the creatine gives you to make sure the subcutaneous water isn't being affected. Because if you compete, you'll have to know that and you'll have to pull the creatine out, which is a really, really good idea. If you want more information about other supplements, what to spend your money on, what to not waste your money on, just Google RP Strength Supplements or Dr. Mike Isretel Supplements. We got tons of videos for you. Click on things, buy things, like things. Love me, please. God. See you next time.